So we made it to Big Bend National Park. Yay! Took 10 hours. It was a long couple of drives. Mm -hmm. We drove two days. Uh, well, not two days, but two separate days. Four hours one day, six hours the next day. Um, but we got our tent all set up. And we are ready to just finally enjoy the national park. We have made it to the desert. Tell me why the park ranger, when I was asking him what trails we should do, was like, what kind of car are you driving? I was like, oh, a Jeep, but I didn't give any more information. I didn't tell him that the Jeep was super old, which in hindsight, Maybe I should have. It's not for off-roading. It is not an off-roading Jeep. I just said it's a Jeep. He goes, okay, perfect. You can do this trail over here. It's called Balanced Rock. You're gonna take a ride onto this road. I was like, okay, cool, sounds good. Why does it matter what kind of car that we drive? He was like, oh, it just gets a little rough towards the end. Eight miles. Eight miles of dirt, rocky road with a bunch of divots and turns and all sorts of things. Anyways, we might not have a working car after this, but we at least made it to the trailhead, so that's a plus, I guess. Check out all of this. It's so hot out here. The I mean, air is so hot. It's so dry. I mean, it's a desert, so it's super dry. But I mean, it's quite. Even the river's drying up. Quite beautiful. The river is super low. Um, this canyon is something else, though. One thing we've noticed about Big Bend is that there's actually not a ton of people here. Um, it's qu pretty quiet. There's only one minute no. of that. <laughs> no. It's actually pretty quiet in comparison to some of the other parks that we've been to. Um, there's very minimal people. Like we'll occasionally pass someone and say hello, but at other parks it's just like crowds and crowds of people. It, it was just crazy. But yeah. it's so quiet. This one is really empty, so it's actually a lot more immersive because you don't hear people constantly and their noise and whatnot or whatever they're doing and calling you that also this whole time also one other thing so this is the usa on this side of the rio grande we're in the usa and over here on the other side of the rio grande is mexico and i keep telling cody we should swim it and jump over there and go to mexico Right here in the shade. 
What are you doing? A lot of wind here. Yeah. Gotta go to Mexico. major hike of our trip it's not that major it's called the lost mine trail I think it should take an average of three hours about two miles in and two miles out I'm already tired <laughs> Cody actually did this trail like six years ago yeah six years ago, six years ago is his first ever experience with a national park, but any kind of major natural area at all that I can so, remember. That he can remember. So here we are again, or here he is again, and now we get to experience Big Bend together. This is your first time, right? This is my first time in Big Bend. Check this out. Cody brought his good camera. He's hoping to see a bear. I am too. I don't know if we'll see any bear or wildlife, mountain lion, anything like that. But I really hope we do. Um, weather is so much nicer today than it was yesterday. Of course I say that and it feels like it's getting hotter by the second. <laughs> There's a lot more breeze, it's a little cooler. Um, so it feels a little easier today. However, because we're doing a longer trail today than we did yesterday, we have more water, more food, more camera equipment on our backs and that's feeling pretty heavy right now. How silly can I get, huh? You look pretty silly. <laughs> Something really special that I've noticed about Big Bend is that it's just incredibly quiet. Um, there's not a ton of visitors like there are at some of the other parks that we've been to and so we rarely run into anybody and when we do run into people they're actually so nice and they'll get to the side or they'll if you're trying to take a picture of something like wildlife or something they'll make sure that they stay away so that you can get your picture and they're very nice this is like my sixth or seventh national park that i have hiked in and this is the quietest one that i've ever been in and it's actually actually really cool and it, and it helps you really stay immersed in the natural beauty a lot of the other parks that i've been to you just, it's just so crowded and it really can take away from the experience even if you are in a really beautiful place just because people get really obnoxious or loud or sometimes they're drunk um but this has been really great
worst part. <laughs> Gentlemen, I believe we made it to the top, the very end of Lost Mine Trail. The Lost Mine. We did it. The Lost Mine. There's no mine up here. <laughs> but there is this view. Crazy. Where is this view? <laughs> Megan says this is Jurassic Park vibes. I might get sued for that one. That's how I know. We're buying some time. We're buying some time. Before the restaurant opens. <laughs> and I'm hiking. That's pretty amazing. Like, at the front is the that That is a iconic. That looks good. That was the most narrow drive ever. I don't know who thought that was a good idea. But that was terrifying. But now we're here at the Hot Springs Trail. Let's go see what this is all about. On the road, I've been away for far too long. But now I'm on my way back home I hear the west winds calling I'm my name They're telling me to head your way Down your road and past your gates Keep your eyes on the horizon I was looking to belong when I'd already found For the setting sun For you to fall into my arms The place I call Okay, this place is crazy. This used to be a resort back in the 1940s through the 60s. A resort with healing waters and people would just drive down into this little spot next to the Rio Grande and just stay here. Wow. Langford Whitaker Store and Post Office. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you think? I bet you it's haunted. Uh, yeah, we should leave. <laughs> it's kind of eerie. Nice There's a little, sniff. um, a little candle there, and that's a little 
Oh, that's weird. It's all eerie, so. We're in the store and played a significant role in the lives of families on both sides of the river. Both sides of the river. Good morning, good morning, good morning, baby. Good morning. This is what this looks like in here in the 43. Jeez. The interior was an eclectic mix of museum collections, store goods, and post office circa 1930. Look at that. Are we sure this is the same building? No. <laughs> I mean, we're out in the middle of nowhere. Hi, we took. Here. It's crazy. That's what I want to know because my car. I barely made it. But they're coming by donkey? They're coming by donkey? They have actual cars. No, the cars just started becoming a thing back then in the 40s. Wow. This is crazy. I never knew this was here. And it's just in a very beautiful spot, too. I mean, Look how empty it's like still. We're not uh, coming across anybody. Also, yeah, like she says, there's nobody here. Nobody. We saw one guy going to take a shower over there. He wasn't taking a shower. <laughs> he was bathing. We've only seen one guy who came. Clearly, he was in his swimsuit, towel, wanted to take a dip in the healing waters. But we're already on our way out. But that's it. We've only seen one person. Also, one other thing about that hot spring is that it used to be a building around it. And it over time, it deteriorated. Um, and actually, sometimes it floods so that you can't even see it. The river will overtake it and you can't even see it anymore and it's completely submerged so we came at a really good time to be able to take a dip and see what's going on here Ooh, look at the fossils fossils This. this is a fossil, ain't it? We just said bye to Big Bend. We're heading out, heading home on our long 10 ish hour drive. Um, just left. Kind of sad. How do you feel? Sad? French grocer. Megan found it on the way here. It's um, a small little grocery store slash cafe. Know, cafe thing um, here in Marathon, Texas. It's right outside of Big Bend, about two hours away, maybe, maybe an hour. No, it was like an hour. Um, but yeah, it's really good. They got really nice coffee. Um, actually, I think last time I heard it. I think Megan was saying that they are being forced to move out of their... This might be their new location. Oh, this might be their new location? Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. But it was very important to the locals around here. Um, because Marathon is technically a food desert. But here there's actually groceries and fresh produce and things like that. So. But they were doing a campaign to help them because they were um, being forced out of their original spot. So save the French grocer. <laughs> they seem to be doing really well right now though, so. Hey. <laughs> He's like, can y'all mind your business? 